Welcome back to another video in my playlist where I show you how to build a racing drone, freestyle drone, quadcopter from start to finish, from a pile of parts on the table to a finished quad ready to fly. Every single step. And in this one, we're gonna set up the video transmitter. We're gonna set up smart audio so we can remote control the video transmitter from our goggles and our, and our controller. And we're gonna tackle the infamous Betaflight 4.1 VTX table. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. If you've just stumbled across this video as the result of like a YouTube search, this is actually part of a huge playlist where I tried to take everything you need to know to build a quadcopter from start to finish and put it in one playlist. So if you had something that interests you, check out the link in the video description to the playlist. But for everybody else who's following along, in this video we're going to set up your video transmitter. And the thing is, you don't have to do anything in this video. You could use this, so small my camera can't even see it, you could use this stupid little button and you short press the button to change the channel and you long press the button to change the band and you double click the button while holding your nose to change the power and it's just don't do, just don't, just don't. Smart audio is the way to go because then you can just use, oh, you can use this and you could use these and you can use a menu in your goggles and it's so much easier and better, trust me. So in order to do that, the first thing we need to do is we need to tell Betaflight which UART this video transmitter is connected on because Betaflight is going to use the UART to talk to the video transmitter. And if we look back here at the flight controller, you can see that this is the plug that goes to the video transmitter and this is TX3, that's UART3 transmit, that is this wire that goes to the video transmitter and that's what's going to be used for smart audio. Now. If you, for some inexplicable reason, the Tyro 119 doesn't come with this wire pre-installed in the plug. And you may recall, if you're following along, I added that wire and I gave you a link to where you could buy a spare wire and you could do the same thing. If you didn't do that, then skip this video because nothing I'm going to show you is going to work. But I sure hope you did it because it is so, so worth it. So we're going to go to the ports tab. For UART 3, we're going to go over to the peripherals column, UART 3, and we're going to choose VTX. TBS Smart Audio is the protocol that's used. There's a video transmitter using Smart Audio on UART 3. We're going to save and reboot. Now, in order to make this work, I am going to need to plug in the battery because you can see that the video transmitter is not powered up. A short reminder, never power up your video transmitter without an antenna connected. I do have an antenna connected. And I'm going to go ahead and boop, plug in. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to tell Betaflight about my video transmitter. What channels and output powers does it support? Because video transmitters differ. And the way that we do that is here in the video transmitter tab. And the first thing I need to do is I'm going to preload a template and then I'm going to modify the template slightly. But before I do that, I want to check right here where it says device ready. It says VTX type smart audio device ready, yes. If yours says device ready, no, it means that either your wiring is incorrect or the, uh, the ports tab has the wrong UART enabled. You're going to want to go double check the wire and you're going to want to go double check that the ports tab is set up like I said. But at this point, or, or it could be powered down, I guess. But um, you want to see device ready, yes, or the stuff we're going to do from now on won't really work. Then we're going to click on this link right here, so tiny, this link right here. It's going to take us to this page, which has pre-made VTX tables. And the VTX table that we want is Smart Audio 2.0. If you're in the United States or most of the rest of the world, you'll pick USA. If you're in Europe, you need to pick EU. Just, there's different regulations in Europe versus EU. So we're going to click on Smart Audio 2.0 USA, and it's going to show us this. And I'm going to click and drag to select all of this stuff, and then I'm going to right click and copy. And then here in the Betaflight configurator, I'm going to hit the button load from clipboard. And that is going to fill in a basic VTX table. Now it turns out that the video transmitter that we're using 
has slightly different power levels than the default table. If we look here, we can see that it has power levels of 25 milliwatts, 200 milliwatts, and 600 milliwatts. So down here at the bottom of the VTX table, we're gonna adjust these power uh, labels to match that. 25, 200, and oh, pretty close, 600. Great, and then we'll go over and we'll hit save. Now at this point, we should be able to remote control the video transmitter using various things, but we can also just test it using this uh, readout right here. So let's say we're gonna change from whatever it's on now to race band, channel one, output power 25 milliwatts, and we'll hit save. And we should see two things happen. Number one, we should see this section over here change to match what we just input there. And number two, we should see these LEDs start moving around. And I don't know what the LEDs exactly mean. I'd have to look at the manual for the flight uh, for the video transmitter to know, but we should see them change, right? Because we made a change and that'll just confirm that like the change is going through. So let's change the output power from 25 to 600 and hit save. And let's just watch and we should see something be different here. Oh yeah, this red, this red blinking LED has changed. Perfect, so it's changing. Channel four, save. Oh yeah, the green LEDs change. See, oh, I don't, so anyway. So it appears to be working. The changes that we're making are taking effect here in the, uh, in the current values and the LEDs are moving. We have remote control of our video transmitter and that is amazing. I would suggest that if you are planning on racing you set your output power to 25 milliwatts. That's what most races require. But uh, most of the people who are building this particular quad are probably gonna be either flying mostly by themselves, maybe with a couple friends, or maybe doing longer range stuff. Uh, and you're gonna wanna have your output power at the max of 600. As far as channels go, it doesn't really matter. No one channel is better than the other. You just can't be on a channel that's the same or too close to somebody else who is flying with you. So if you fly by yourself, just pick whatever channel you want. I always pick channel eight, race eight. And the reason for that is that race band eight is outside the range that Wi-Fi uses. Some of these channels actually overlap with Wi-Fi slightly, and you'll see interference from Wi-Fi access points if they're in the area. So by going to race eight, I stay away from Wi-Fi, but you can pick whichever channel that appeals to you. And especially if you're flying with other people, you definitely will want to organize. I got a video about how to do that. FPV channel best practices. I'll put it in the video description and you definitely should check that out before you fly with any friends. There's one more thing I should show you. I, I showed you how to set up smart audio, but I didn't show you how to actually freaking use it except on the configurator, but you're not going to have a laptop with you in the field. So here's, here's how you actually freaking use it. Here are my goggles and I'm going to, I think I had the, uh, it on race eight. So I'm going to go ahead and just move my goggles to race eight. You can't see what I'm doing there, but there we go. They're on race eight. And so now I'm going to record with a DVR exactly what my goggle screens are showing. So you can see what you would see inside the goggles. So here's the, the camera, right? Cameras and so what you're going to do is you're going to go center throttle. You're going to go yaw left and pitch forward at the same time. And the throttle has to be centered. It may be a little sensitive, but you can do it pretty reliably. So oh, I held it too long. There we go. So when I do that, then this OSD menu, on-screen display menu is going to pop up. And there are a whole bunch of things you can do to configure about the flight controller from within the menu just to make it easier for you to tweak things in the field. But the basics are that you move the carrot up and down using the right stick. What we want to do is we want to go to features and then we'll push right on the right stick to go into the menu. And here in features, we're going to go to VTX SA. That's video transmitter, smart audio, VTX SA, and we'll go to the right. And that is where we can configure our video transmitter. So for example, uh, we are right now on race band eight at 25 milliwatts. And we can change that from 25 to 200 milliwatts. Likewise, if I need to, I can change the channel. So I'll just go up to, let's see, channel eight. We'll just go down to channel six. Why not? And we'll do set and confirm. Now, when I do that, I'm going to lose video because I've just changed the channel. So I'll need to get my goggles out and I'll need to go down from race eight to race six. And the image should come right back in. So that is how you change your output power and your channel 
in the menu. So oh, well, the last step is that when you are done, what you're going to do is you're going to go back and back again, and then you're going to go to save and exit, and you will save and exit. And um, if you don't, when you hit set in the VTX SA menu, it takes effect immediately, but it is not preserved across power cycles unless you do save and exit. So if you don't do save and exit after you set, then when you unplug the battery and plug it back in again, it'll go back to the other channel that it was on, which is probably not what you want. So there you go. That is how to get into the Betaflight OSD and change your channel and output power using your transmitter sticks.